Hey guys, welcome to a, another commentary done by Diggity. Bottom right hand corner we have Kakao as the red Protoss. He is a fantastic Korean Protoss player. Bottom left hand corner we have Urbmon as the blue Zerg backed by Pocket of Demand. And if you are a BSL participant at any level really, or you live stream Brood War, get me a replays. Because at this stage I am waiting on a show match between 80s Mullet and Urbmon, and otherwise I am free up as far as replays go. I do want to see if I can find a couple top level BSL guys that I can commentate. In particular, I want to see if I can find Terror or Oyaji, Oya, um, because wow, they had a great match in BSL. Also wanted to give a big announcement. Go to Patreon ASL Casts. Tasteless and Artosis are saving ASL. They are going to go ahead and do live broadcasts of, well, not live. They're going to do broadcasts of ASL on YouTube for the rest of us. Special thanks to them. Looks like Urban's going to get the initial scout. And also, I wanted to give a shout out to Yes, who's live. I'm doing this live on Twitch as a recording. One, to keep myself honest, and two, to kind of give it a better livey feel. And also, special thanks to Greg Lou, aka. He's a TL admin, TL Flash FTW, who got me some delicious meat as a welcome back gift from, it's called Heavy Meadow. Like heavy metal, but meadow. Gateway first from Cacao, which is going to be bad news for Urban. He is opening, it looks like, probably an 11 hatchery off the bat. And that means he's going to have zealots inside of his base before he has a spawning pool to respond. And that is almost guaranteed because Cacao has this probe scout moving to his front door. So the risky opening, one problem opening up gateways is oftentimes you're not sure where your opponent's spawning, but in this instance, it's going to pay off for him. Plus, he's going to get annoying probe alongside to do extra damage and harassment. So Heavy Meadow, uh, I, if you are in San Diego or even in the Southern California area and you like alcohol, I highly recommend building a forge as well. Highly recommend checking out their delicious, delicious mead. <clears throat> but yeah, like a meadow, a field, it's heavy, burdensome from Lost Cause Brewery. They have a lot of delicious stuff. And we see a pylon in the natural expansion with the probe hiding from behind. So with that forge, he is going to be able to build cannons. And he actually also might be able to lock himself in, depending on the positioning. I think this is once you place two buildings, you end up getting squeezed out. And also sending out that chat, it looks like Urban did see it. So he's moving the drones to try to take care of this. He's going to have to do the drone trick with the mineral lines to try to get drones. Then beautiful, beautiful job actually able to get two drones. The probe trying to take on one of the drones that's on top of that cannon. And I believe with that, the drones should be able to take that cannon out before it is online. But a zealot is already making its way across the field. So pylon still up, probe still in the area. So it can still play something like a shield battery, like a cannon to make these Zealots more effective. And keep in mind, Urbmon still does not have a spawning pool. It just finished. Zerglings are still coming online. First Zealot does get a single drone kill. The drones are retreating. He's going to guard that cannon while the Zerglings pull in. But this is a second Zealot moving his way across. So I think this cannon is going to be able to get online. We'll see. Zerglings moving their way that direction. It is a bit exposed. More Zerglings flooding in. The, cr the crucial thing for Urbmon is that he's not overproduced Zerglings. Looks like a cancel from Cacao, so he actually canceled a lot of these buildings, so he got a lot of those minerals back, but that is still going to be a, a little bit of mineral waste. Several Zerglings moving their way across to try to deal with these Zealots. Nice micro from Cacao doing the two-on-one, and it looks like he's already gotten seven kills between these two Zealots, one of those being a drone kill. And keep in mind, while these Zerglings are being built, that means drones are not being built. Three Zealots now in the front door. Urban getting some free hits, and it looks like Kakao's going to try to use a more defensive position in this back corner. Unfortunately, this is a kind of wide open space. And yeah, once these Zerglings take out these pylons, they would be able to get a flank attack on these Zealots to negate the ability to kind of sneak into this mineral line. And also, Urban very cleverly, is going to be able to take that pylon down with no problem. He also has a hatchery building at the 9 o'clock location. So he's like, okay, if I'm floating minerals, and actually with that pylon kill, that also causes Cacao to be supply block, pulling that zealot back. This does, once he gets the second zealot out, this should be a tight front door. Plus he's the cannon to defend. He's trying to get his nexus up. Still is not mining gas, so he's going to be very, very late on his tier 1.5 slash 2 tech. Urban is building a fourth hatchery in his natural expansion. So he's just, well, okay, I got pulled behind, was still able to, mineral, uh, to mine minerals that entire time. So... So let me go ahead and make it up to myself in the mid game and treat myself to a hatchery bonanza. Now that I have map control, he has several Zerglings on the front door keeping an eye on those Zealots as they're hanging out. Looks like additional Zealots being built. 
and now the question is, what does Kakao do to sneak back into this match? So, entire initial attack thwarted, just now getting his Nexus up, moving, looks like some nice Maynarding, hard to say that word, Maynarding, of the probes to his natural expansion. Just now getting his Cybernetics core, still working off one gateway. So, Erdmon is basically 100% free to just drone, 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 drone. He is mining out of that extractor, so he can push tech as well. And yeah, he's got a lot of larvae to work with, and it looks like he's got a lot of minerals to work with as well. Moving a single up, pulling that drone back. We'll see what it does in a second. It looks like the Zealots are pushing a little bit on that front door, able to get a single Zergling kill and open up map control a little bit for Kakao. Keep in mind, Urbmod at any point could just build a huge amount of Zerglings and flood the map, so he needs to be very, very careful. Zergling's trying to slow these zealots down so he can establish a defensive position on his front. I like the Sim City. Hatchery, Den, so the zealots have to kind of cycle into this front area, and the Zergling's popping in the perfect timing to cope with this. And you can see, yeah, wow, the zealots gonna box themselves in once again, but that is not yeah, that's one thing about this map that I'm almost wondering if this if Zerg players and Protoss players would feel this is a little bit more Zerg favored, just because a lot of the kind of spaces on this map don't allow for zealot retreats to where they can get those one-on-one -on -one situations. Urban trying to move this second this is gonna be two overlords that are gonna be exposed to this Corsair that are, that's going to be out momentarily. Citadel of a Dune is up. Weapons one being upgraded as well as Zealot leg speed, so we're probably gonna see an attempt at Zealot. Corsair timing pressures, but Erdmon is in such a good position, honestly, economically, that I think he's got 29 drones, three bases up. He can cap that gas at leisure, still has a, a strong degree of map control. Corsair is going to be able to take that first Overlord out. That will supply cap Erdmon when it happens. But yeah, he's in a really good position. Lair tech, uh, three fourths the way. He's going to be way ahead in tech. He's going to be economically, he's already secured his third base. And this is not much of an army to speak of from Kakao. Planting down some additional gateways, kind of moving into the standard meta, looks like one. So second Corsair out, one Overlord down. Second Corsair is gonna go ahead and check things out. And I think this is, I think he managed to avoid a supply cap there, but he is gonna get supply cap with that second Overlord kill. Just now taking a second gas. A couple, course, a couple Hydralisks underneath those Overlords. And a nice, wow, I didn't even realize there was a Hydralisk underneath there. One Hydralisk can actually maybe take that Overlord out. One on one. I'm not sure he wants to take the damage on the Corsair overall. But with these two Corsairs, he might still be able to prod and do some additional economic damage, but instead it looks like he's going to opt to move out, take these Zerglings out that are just hanging out on his front door. He's waiting a little bit until he has an additional Zelt to maybe prevent a run by. Keep in mind there's still a cannon right there. Fourth gateway coming online, going for the range upgrade just in case there's Lurker tech. Corsair is hanging out with that Bangalos who's that poor Bangalos. Every time I see it, I'm like, you just live a dizzy life. You just spin there in your cage. Yeah, poor, poor Bangalos. Every time. Spire being built, about halfway finished. And we are seeing the speed upgrade. An additional hatchery, by the way, at the 9 o'clock location, plus the evolution chamber hanging out there. And I, yeah, I still feel like they're with just the single Hydralisk there. Um, it is an opportunity for additional economic damage. <laughs> I'm chatting back. Zealots moving out with that leg speed upgrade. Level 1 weapons will upgrade as they're making their way across. And this is where they can just dive in on the front. This is a lot of Hydralisks, but keep in mind, still between the Zealots, forcing the, the Zealots to... And basically what you want to do is, is you want to have the Corsairs attacking the, the Overlords, try to take out what you can. Drones pulling off the line to provide extra defense. Creek Colony being built. That is not as many Hydralisks as I thought it was, so this is actually going to do more damage than I thought. One Overlord down, additional Overlords getting taken out, and some Drones getting taken out. Wow, it is Drones on Zealots, which is not what you want to see. Hydralisks trying to pull their way down, and it looks like they're going to try to work on that Sun Colony. I actually want to see, yeah, do that, do the run by, while you're also taking out additional Overlords. And Urban needs to prioritize the Overlord's safety at this stage, because otherwise he's not going to be able to build any additional units to defend against this. So basically, Corsair is running free. Hydralis is engaging right on top of the Zealot line, which is not what he wants. Corsair is continuing to do work. How many kills did that do? Only two on that one. I want to see what the count is for the other one. I'm wondering if he was able to sneak out a Scourge to take out the additional Corsair, if I'm just missing it somewhere on the field. Is maybe going to lose his Spire as the Zealots are split at multiple locations. Looks like the Zealots have been cleaned up at the natural, but the Zealots going to be able to wipe out that Spire, plus all the mining disruption. So Kakao doing a nice job of disrupting Urbmon to sneak back in this match and what he needs to do, and it looks like the Zealots getting cleaned up. Corsair, oh, I didn't get a final count of how many units were killed. 
But what you know, getting this Nexus now, you honestly had an opportunity to take that Nexus much, much earlier. Has some high Templar, but I, he doesn't have Templar Storm. I don't have Templar Storm. I don't think he has Storm upgraded, so he's moving these high Templar out almost as kind of a fake threat bait. Looks like Urban going to move out with, the, and he's trying to kill that sound is that pylon being taken out so we can funnel units through that front a little bit more openly. This is not enough. This is not enough units to deal with this amount of hydralisks. They might be able to take out this nexus, but it looks like Urban's going to go ahead and back out. Perhaps seeing the threat of yeah, now storms being upgraded. That's what I thought. Um, he's got a Urban with kind of a skeleton crew of hydralisks to try to press map control. But the very threat might keep Kakao back. Kakao being, wow, just continuing with the aggression despite not having Psystorm. He's like, I don't think you have the units to do it. I did enough in economic damage. I can still press your front door and force you to not build drones, to force you to not invest in economy and inv invest in this and also do it. The, basically engage these fights while I have the advantage. Archon moving up from behind. And once again, flooding the natural expansion as drones are moving their way back. Probably they were there for a miss rally. And, oh, Urban once again in the red as an Overlord was taken out. And so he's going to have to rely on everything that was being built. Still does not have Lurker Aspect upgraded and might lose the Lurker Aspect upgrade on top of everything else. But the, the goons are not focusing the Hydralist den. So the gas getting taken out. Cacao talking instead of building things and taking out units. So, wow, Lurker Tech does finish. And that is going to give Urban an opportunity to sneak back into the natural expansion with a slew of units and clean this up Psystorm might finish oh doesn't just finishes as the high templar dies so it is not going to be able to get a Psystorm out so a wasted high templar and that is expensive that is a lot of gas and i gotta ask at this stage is cacao playing drunk because he's floating a lot of minerals he uh, lost the nexus and i'm not sure if that was a nexus cancel or i just missed i don't think i think it was a nexus cancel to build additional units perhaps I'm not sure the logic behind it, but I missed perhaps a, a counter flank attack here in the background. You guys can check on the VOD, but that is the third not being up once again. Side storms mostly whiffed. Is there another? And it's going to be a while before we see another storm. That's one thing with this current meta. I'm trying to get that Nexus back up. But this current meta is if you do not land your side storms, that can cost you map control. Although Urban does not have enough high. I'm trying to sneak through and pick those high Templar off does manage to get one. He does not have a lot of Hydralis. He, does, he hasn't had a large ground army just because of the constant pressure from Cacao. Just relentless pressure from Cacao. Needs to get those Lurkers down. I don't see an Observer anywhere out in the field. So that is going to send, plus with the lack of... Well, we've got one... Well, actually, some Hydralis sneaking from behind. Going to take... So an empty storm right there. Some Hydralis walking through it and actually getting bonus. Wow. That, i got to say, that was more lucky storms from Cacao than anything. As Urban was just not in position. It was kind of sloppy. Pylon blocking upper left-hand corner, realizing that Urban is going to be able to shift into some map control momentarily. He's still sitting at two bases. Nexus just coming online for his third, and it is a mineral-only base. Let's check his tech in the... Oh, what is going on here? Accidentally blocked six probes. This is ugly. This is ugly. That makes me feel bad for Kakao. Urban getting his additional hatchery on the inside six, which is again a mineral only, but he's gonna be able to, the advantage of this is less the hatchery, more that you can kind of take this high ground area and provide additional map control and defend against any units oncoming. Observer making their way forward, might get picked off, does get picked off. So that should interrupt that attack. This is a Dragoon heavy force though. So maybe he wants to stick with just pure Hydralisks to counter this army. And Urbmont's looks like, okay, getting drop, upgrading drop on layer. He is going to be behind in the overall upgrade war. Level 2 weapons for Kakao. And actually working on level 3 weapons plus level 1 armor. And that can be that can be it sometimes for Zerg. He's sitting with a probe in the upper right-hand corner, but not yet taking a sneaking nexus. Some Hydra is sneaking through, realizing they missed the Protoss army. Lurker's trying to make their way back, but Kakao swing by with a flank. Is going to be able to take these three Lurkers out, but he's going to get sandwiched, perhaps, by reinforcements from Urban in the interim. Still not a lot of Hydralisks from Urban. He's had trouble macroing all game. It looks like finally getting some Hydralisks swinging around. But keep in mind, between the, the small number of just units out on the field plus the weapons upgrade, that could be it. I'd love to see translations of the Korean out in the field. And he's going to lose more Overlords up above. Urban behind in the overall supply count. So still, still has the economic advantage. 
but that is going to fade momentarily as that base is being taken up right in the corner but Kakao is going to be able to take this inside six and actually I'm going to say has map control at this stage as Urban does not have a lot of units on the field plus he's got ooh I feel like that's a bit of a wasted storm he didn't need to do it with that few Hydralisks out in the field will be my side criticism Kakao is probably a much better player than I though so Hydralisks still still trying to group up to be able to deal with this army and they're fighting uphill so not the battles you want to see. Zealot was on top of some Hydralisks. It looks like you just see their desiccated corpses in the background. High Templar getting wiped out. I don't think it had any storms left. And it is just, wow, back and forth, constant fight. Ermon just can't amass a sizable army to deal with the Protoss forces in front of him. Nice micro out of that storm. But still just not enough Hydralisks and not enough upgrades to deal with Kakao's forces building additional Hydralisks to try to deal with this. Nexus, actually, it looks like it was just a pylon. Nexus going to come online, upper right-hand corner, Kakao. I would say it looks like he managed to somehow get those units out. The Hydralisk count, just Kakao's done a fantastic job of keeping this Hydralisk count to a minimum and never letting... Oh, and speaking of Hydralisk count, now the Hydralisk den has been taken out. It was wounded from earlier. Urban looking like he is in bad shape, I gotta say. Kakao with another round of units. This is the thing, though. Kakao, he has done a good job keeping with these engagements, but a bad job spending a lot of his resources. He's floating a lot of minerals. And with the amount of bases he's had mostly unmolested up to this stage, you would expect him to be able to just push and just wreck Urban, especially pumping out of eight gateways, where Urban just hasn't seemed to be able to muster any semblance of, a, of an attack force. And he keeps foraying out with just, yeah, small groups of Hydralisks. I think he's hoping to pick off these High Templar. And it looks like he's going to be able to tempt these units back. The Observer is still overhead. So Lurker is dying very, very rapidly. And still plenty to deal with the rest of this. Nice little dancing, though, by Erdmon. Able to make these units do a little bit more than they even could. And it looks like he was able to sneak some Lurkers in the back corner. The cannons are going to be able to wipe out what was there. Kakao going to go ahead and take that inside three, which is going to give him... He already had the the advantage, but he's going to be able to cap that even further. But somehow, Urban, between all of this action and sitting on three bases, his main still has a, a good amount of mineral fields. Looks like he's rebuilt that hatchery right there. Or sorry, that, that Hydralston right there. Has managed to even the supply count. And I got to say, most of that, I think, is just through fancy micromanagement and Kakao just not paying attention to what his units are doing here and there. Um... Overlord hanging out in that corner. That might be an opportunity for a drop later on. We'll have to try to keep an eye on it. Good storm on lurkers that are not yet burrowed. And there's no observer on the field. Empty storm right there. Hoping to catch some lurkers with complete lack of vision. So Urban going to be able to march forward. Once again, rest this mid-map area. But a counterattack moving in. Going to be able to take out that 3 o'clock base. So Kakao getting losing a lot of map control and starting to fall behind now. Ooh, that's not what you want to have as a High Templar just hanging out there. That's a lot of gas that's wasted. Up right-hand corner, looks like it is established. That is a huge amount of cannons. Now I want to see if we're going to see a drop out of this. Urban forces kind of getting wiped out. Still sitting at a, wow, big upgrade disadvantage. And I want to see if we're going to see that Overlord, any sort of drops at any corner. No cannon, there's only one cannon. One cannon in the main. Kakao with a sizable attack force moving out. Looks like a Dark Templar is being built, by the way, to be annoying and out in the field. Erdmon still not taking any additional bases, and he needs to, aside from just building army, he needs to start uh, establish some map control or get something somewhere. It looks like 12 o'clock base is being taken, but there is a High Templar or a Dark Templar right there to take care of that momentarily. And the Observer was just waiting for it. So nice map. I like what Kakao did with his map vision there, but he's got an overwhelming Hydralisk force driving these Dragoons back. Back to Kakao's main. Kakao's still sitting at four bases. Usually when you're a Zerg player, you want to be one base up over your Protoss opponent. In this situation, Kakao is one base up over his opponent. There's a drop. Missed it. Looks like it was able to at least dissuade those probes from mining. I'm not sure how many probes. Looks like it only got one kill. One kill out of there. It's possible there was another lurker that got wiped out. I don't think so, though. Kakao waiting to, to take the 6 o'clock, and this is a very difficult base to retake because of the ramp positioning. 
if he just puts a pylon wall plus some cannons, that's going to be hard for Urbmon to, to reestablish. And I got to say, things look bad for Urbmon right now. He's about even in supply count. He's about even on drone count. He actually has superior minerals in the bank right this second. Looks like that lurker was wiped out here. But he's behind on bases overall. He hasn't established anything new. So if he's going to win this, he's going to have to do it by sweeping around, getting some... He's going to have to do it through micromanagement, basically. Um, against units that have higher upgrades than he does. Pushing into that inside 3 o'clock base. If he can get on that high ground, that will be one big step to doing that. Working on the cannons first. He does have that high ground advantage now. That makes those Dragoons less effective. Unfortunately, does not make those Zealots less effective. They are right on top of the Hydralisks, and that is going to push out that attack force. Oof. Things not looking good for Urban at all. He does have another pile of Hydralisks moving into the midfield, but Kakao still has a large standing army, again, with superior upgrades, plus shields on top of it. There is another Lurker that might be able to drop back down, but there's a cannon waiting for it just in case that happens. So Urban running out of opportunity, running out of chances to sneak back in this match. Zealots pushing. Ooh, good storm. Uh, looks like Urban was able to position his, his Hydralisks a little bit forward. They do have the high ground once again. And uh, able to take that High Templar out. A little bit of back and forth, but he can't press much further. Second Hydralisk force pushing up. And let's see if he can hold this line. Being right here is where you want to be. So that these Dragoons do not get that high ground. Or so that basically you have the high ground advantage versus low ground advantage. More units pushing up for Kakao. But the thing is, is, the longer this goes on for Urban, the more units he's going to expend, and the stronger position Kakao is going to be in in the mid game. The one trick, though, is Kakao, so, and you can see Urban actually uh, just hurting on minerals right now. His bottom, his main, is basically mined out. His natural's still doing okay, but he doesn't have any additional bases anywhere out in the field. Kakao has weapons upgrade. He's got all sorts of bases to mine out of. The only thing I feel that's lacking from Kakao is, is he hasn't supported a lot of this uh, macro advantage. It looks like he's going to... I missed maybe that 3 o'clock base getting <laughs> wiped out again. He hasn't supported this superior economic advantage with a whole lot of macro advantage. He's still sitting at close to Urban supply, which is going to hurt him because macro has got to turn into micro at some point. It has to. Six o'clock base getting, yeah, that field getting established, getting additional, wow, forward gateway right there. Urban peeling into the natural expansion, and Kakao has no army here to speak of. All the minerals in the world, but no army. It looks like he's flooding in from behind, so this there might be an opportunity for Finzer attack. A storm whiffing. The observer gets taken out, so these lurkers are going to get some free damage. And now he's got kind of an interesting split, split attack opportunity. This is not a large attack. The Urban can win this fight, actually, and he really needs to if he's going to take this game. This could be the last hurrah for Urban. Hydra is pushing into that natural expansion. A High Templar is there. One High Templar getting taken out, getting taken out just as it had Storm. Urban moving the rest of his Hydralisks back so that second Storm actually whips. Natural expansion open. Another good Storm catching several Hydralisks. Archon being morphed, and now the rest of the units sweeping in from above. Urban trying to push more units in, and he is all in at this stage. He has not gotten any additional expansions. Honestly, it is now or never for him. If he doesn't win with the Heidel's force he has on the ground, I think that is going to be all she wrote, because he's just going to be too far behind economically. Another observer going to be in a good storm before the Lurker is even able to hit anything. Pushing around. Still batches of Hydralisks that are not engaging with this fight. Backing off the Archon, so... Now that second attack force moving in. Archon summoning on the front is going to take a bit of damage. More Dragoons morphing. Urban desperately throwing units here at the front. Kakao with a significant supply count. But the natural is breach. And this is Hydralisks on Dragoons. And Urban's doing an excellent job. And because of the SimCity, they're not able to do a full engage. And there aren't any other units. out Again, Kakao's macro really hurting him, and Urban, it looks like, was able to drop or do something to... Actually, it looks like there's a Dark Templar there to provide some defense. Looks like I got one kill, so that was disrupted. I probably missed some additional drops in the other corner as Urban was is just pressing into this, but Urban might be able to get something done. Oh, looks like that additional armor upgrade is going to finish, and that's going to be level 3 armor. Urban still paused on his upgrades, and Urban needs to persist with this attack. 
because even his third base is looking somewhat thin here. And instead, oof, instead Kakao has a decent attack force. It's pushing out. He's regrouping. Still, Kakao with an Urban somehow has a bank. How did he get a bank? Okay, looks like he managed to re-sneak the mineral only. Still regathering. Threatening from two from kind of a two-location front. I think that was a bad rally, because these are single units engaging the full brunt of the force, and Urban has his work cut out for him. This is still wow. This is still being being pincered, basically, as an attack front, and having just under-upgraded high ballistics that are very soft, very weak, trying to go and get work done. They are still in the natural expansion, attacking the high ground where that mischance favors those dragoons up there. Are they going to just continue up north? It looks like they're going to continue. This is where the, the meat is now. Honestly, yeah, because the main, that's where all of the buildings are, but that's also where they're produced from. And so you're kind of fighting uphill. The mains mined out, the natural expansions mined out for cacao. This, this is actually a big swing because Urban is able to disrupt mining there. Maybe there's not much mining happening here, and cacao's one functional big mining base surrounded by cannons is in the upper right hand corner. Keep in mind, Dark Templar moving in. Keep in mind, still a huge... Ooh, Dark Templar are going to get taken out by those units. And still able to get into the natural somehow and engage the units, backing off. And just a persistent, long attack, just working bit by bit by bit to try to get this accomplished against, I'm going to say it, practically impossible odds here. I am shocked that Urban is still in this match. I am shocked. And the supply count is even... Urban just putting on a clinic of control, doing these engagements exactly where he needs to, and using his opponent's bottleneck against him really, really effectively. This is a significant amount of Hydralisks still in that base. And he's, so he's disrupted mining here at the third. He does have an Overlord in, in position to maybe disrupt mining. It looks like he's moving units up there to do that now. And Kakao, yeah. Is he going to be able to take the 12 or something? <clears throat> needs to take some bases. He's in position to take bases, but just isn't taking them. Instead, just kind of faltering on his macro. Perhaps feeling the the pressure and the need to get all of these gateways online and get them actually doing something. Looks like Urban missed it, but he snuck in, sniped that that inside or that three o'clock base. So that is one more base down for Kakao, and now Kakao is down to this base, which is easily snipable by these Hydralisks. Let's see if he just sacks it. Nope. It's gonna Yep, going for the pincer now. So re-engaging, forcing them to come from both directions. This nexus is... Yeah, and that's going to be GG. Wow! Wow! Amazing play from Urban, Able to sneak it back through, I gotta say, sheer persistence. Great play from Urban. I was not expecting that. I gotta say, they were... They, wow. With the upgrade disadvantage, with... The overall macro disadvantage just through sheer persistence and continually engaging in fields of play where he could get split field uh, persistent attacks is able to sneak the game out. Wow, I gotta say. So props to Urban, well fought. It shows you it, it, plays to pay, uh, it, it pays to play to the last unit. So now I'm gonna do all the announcements. So first of all, go to ASL Casts on Patreon. Everybody, go donate to that now. I think they initially set a goal of 4,000. Last time I checked, they were just about to breach 4,000. I honestly want to flood them with more money in that field, just to send a statement that we want ASL, we want professional Korean broadcasting with English commentary to remain a thing. So go there, check that out. Also, uh, I don't know, I'm not really doing it for the Twitch subscriptions at this stage because I think that's just broken on my channel for who knows how long. Uh, but I am going to try to do the regular hangs for the old Diggity crew for the nightly roam stuff. I guess it'll be more daily roam at this stage, but have fun times. Uh, if anybody has a replay they want to get to me, I'm looking at you, I'm Jariah, uh, in chat. Get it to me because I want to cast, I want to continue this to continue to cast streamers, continue to highlight specifically the North American, but I want to highlight BSL guys, uh, the international community as well. Thank you everybody for watching. I appreciate your support, and this has just been. I'm really enjoying doing this again. Uh, really appreciate everybody, all the Patreon supporters, Mr. Yes in particular, who's back out there and uh, in chat, still modding the channel per usual. So thanks everybody for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.